The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour. The Dow's down 15 at 32,470 in this opening salvo for the week of the 10th of April. A Monday, and we're looking at the S&P uh, coming back a little bit from the low of the day. S&P at this particular point is now down 27 at 4,077. Uh, the low uh, earlier on, whoops, I got this out the way there. Uh, no, I don't have that. Oh, there it is. The low was uh, 4,072.55. My thinking was that there was a chance, just a chance, that we could see um, a one a two-click session today if the early sell-off start to hold and after 10.20 to 10.35 today, this morning, Eastern Time, the, the Dow was at least showing some positive signs, maybe going plus 20, and the S&P and Qs would follow. We'll see. The day is young. Uh, but it would be that way for at least part of the day the whole thing comes between 1.30 and 2 o'clock. The Dow has to be more than 80 points, 60 to 80 points higher, holding very well and dragging the others up. And then you can have a nice close. And what am I expecting? I'm expecting that in the Chapway methodology, let me just do this for some of you who are new to my work, since we're always getting um, new people here at TFNN listening. Uh, here we go. So I'm always looking at find the lowest low, count each successively higher peak, and really count them alphabetically. Why am I not getting? Oh, that's because that's in the way. There it is. Okay, there we go. So uh, identify the lowest low. We always try to do that in Chapway methodology. And uh, for subscribers, that's why we've been long the Dow um, at least since October. We've added to it uh, periodically, and then almost every day we've been buying the UDOW three times long. Sometimes some part of it we've kept, other times we're just getting trades and we take money off and then we put it back on again the next day. That's where we are. Oops, I didn't mean to put, do that. That was the wrong one. This is the one I wanted to show. That was my newsletter for Monday. So let's just do this right here. There. So identify the lowest low, count each success of the higher peak. Alphabetize them sequentially, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. So it could be the first peak is peak A, one penny above that. So it's a leg A until it makes a peak. And then one penny above starts leg B until it makes a peak. It's a floating letter. A peak B until it goes one penny above, goes to C. One penny uh, pulls back, one penny above peak C starts leg D. And D pulls back. When you get to D, other things can happen. You need to use other Chapman wave methodology, or you just merely keep counting successively peak D, E, F, G. But if you do make a leg E within three bars of D, you can have an alternative count which says you could even get a brand new buy mode going to another four higher peaks. It's a terrific technique I discovered decades ago. Uh, here we are. We're at a peak D in the in the uh, S&P, but not the Dow. The Dow went to a peak C. At the, the Dow went to a peak C. I've got to find this. There. A peak C. I D U. And it sounds so complicated, but it's the easiest thing. If you can count the alphabet, you can do the Chapman wave. Peak C, you're waiting for D, because in a buy mode, there's almost always a leg D, and then other things can happen. Uh, yes, you can go to an E. You can see that. Look at this. I showed this to subscribers to my opening call. Every weekend, as long as I'm in town, although I've now set it up, I'll practice this week to see if I can do it. But if I'm out of town, I can still do I can be anywhere in the world. Hopefully, I can do it because I've now put it on another, another machine. I just have to work out because I'll have all my uh, tools on my desktop computer, the one you're looking at right now. And I go to it through my PC. I've done this, what, for 20-something years. I've used my PC around the world. It's just fun that you can get it. As long as my computer, my desktop is, is running. And we've had some problems lately uh, between the uh, utility company and trade station, which sells, says to me, I don't know if I'm going away for a period of time, which I am in May, uh, for a little bit. Um, I, 
I'm hoping everything works just fine. So here we are at peak C. We, I like my rule of thumb is 136, uh, making the next highest high uh, one bar later or the lowest low one bar later is really good. It means you've got the trend in place. Three bars, fine. But when it gets to six bars, ah, you have to almost restart the buy mode or the buy signal. So in this particular case, this is the third day third session, consecutive session, that we're just trading in this little narrow range. We need to have one quick pop to 33,634.73, uh, and we start leg D, one penny. Uh, but you can also make a peak C1, C2, that's I'm not ignoring that. I just see enough strength here in the in the technicals on the daily Dow, the daily S&P. Look at this, the, the daily Dow. The price is way above the nine period moving average in the daily chart. There's a daily on the left, weekly in the, in the middle, and on the right is the monthly. And even here, look at the monthly. Really, using the weekly Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, if we can just push into the 34,000, say 20s, that breaks the, the weekly and the monthly resistance level. Wouldn't that be something, especially in this negative frame? Uh, and I, I have to thank. Uh, one of our uh, astute Chapman waivers, been with me for a great student for a long time, pointing out that I'd missed in my weekly chart, I put in a peak D, but actually it was only a peak C in the futures, the E-mini. Yes, it is a peak D that was made uh, back in uh, February. Uh, there we go. Uh, February, the uh, week of the third but not in the cash. And the cash is really what I use. That's your benchmark. So that says to get the cash weekly uh, into leg D, it needs to go 4,195.44 was the high on the, the week of the 3rd of Feb, and it needs to go to 4,195.45, one penny. You start your leg D and then we'll measure. We'll do the vertical measure. We've already set it in place on the left side. What happens on the right place, on the right side? Is the MACD strong? It's the stochastic, which is much weaker than it was back in that February high. Is it, is it fading? What is it doing, basically? All right. So there we are. Let's look at the QQQ. Also, look at the technicals of the daily. We, we, we're struggling to do the one-to-one -one Chapman Wave uh, parallel extension. That means the number of bars or the angle of ascent, in this case ascent, um, is equal and it's done that but it's stalled just a little bit below. It was perfect because it broke out of the low that I used there for the one-to-one. -one. It's gone higher but that means if it goes high, you can add the next level of support and I use it just right there on the low that was made there. So that says if everything works out, you should try to get to 41.48. Uh, this week. This week. Uh, time is of the essence. QQQ, here we go. I'll do this quickly because a lot of questions came in. QQQ trading uh, down almost four at 31, 314.20s. Um, sitting on the 14 period moving average, it needs by Wednesday, I'm going to give it another extra day and a half, uh, by Wednesday to be trading the 316.78 or higher level. Uh, next thing is IWM, that's 2000, struggling. It's uh, doing nicely today, but it's really struggling. It's up $1.25 or 175 I just want to quickly do gold. Uh, gold is down 22. I think gold is taking a breather here. Silver is also uh, down. <clears throat> A little bit down 16 cents, holding much better. It's actually gone to a leg F. We'll talk about that because it's not something to dismiss. A little divergence like that. Dow's up eight, SB's down 23. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Right, so some, so, uh, someone asked about the, the left side, right side price time match that I had drawn uh, before the show, uh, which said that there should be a retest of the high um, that was made in the E-mini, one minute E-mini at 9.12 this morning. At 4109.56, and we got there. Uh, that should have been a little bit longer. So we got there. I did the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line, and that broke above it. So we hit the 4111 round number high three three minutes ago. Now it's pulling back a bit. But most importantly, you see this leg A in the 10 minute chart. See the way the MACD just stalled, the price stalled exactly as it got to the 14 period exponential moving average and it stalled at the MACD just about to cross positive. Look, it's at 0 0.13, minus 13 in the histogram. But you've got a beautiful W formation in the on balance volume. At this moment, it looks like it's struggling a little bit, but it is, it, it's a nice W. And you've got the stochastic finally in the 20% area, 27%. So this is going to be very important. There are a lot of cross currents. And my, my thinking here is that if any point during it's now 10, the you your 1025 period and the Dow did go positive, now it's down 10. This is going to be a very important session in the sense that we've already got, uh, I have to go back now, I have to say that we've already got in the, look, here we go. In the S&P, remember the target is always to get to a D in a buy signal to buy mode. Well, we've got to that peak D, but it's holding really well. Although it's the third session since the high, it really is holding well. It's holding above the nine period moving average, not even the 14 at 4,080. That's that's where it is right now. And at 4,078, I think, or 79 is that nine period moving average. And the QQQ went to a leg D that made a peak D, third session of digesting the gain. But the technical so far, and I keep having to say so far because 
We don't know. You can only say at this particular point, this is exactly what's going on. Uh, so, so far, that's good. So I'm watching this closely. And then the question came in, what about the VIX index? Well, every day for, for the last uh, week or two, we, we've had a quick look at the VIX to say, well, what's happening here? It's at the lower end of the range, under 20. It's at 19.61 again today. It is up at 121. When it's up $1.21, and it's always reluctant to rally, that's saying that, yes, yeah, some people are getting a little itchy and they're starting to put in some some kind of uh, insurance, you can call it, or it's a trend, or whatever it is, it's, it's saying that there is some buying, but that's a little unusual to have it up a dollar twenty-three when the Dow is uh, now just down 30. It was up a moment ago, but it's still in a decent range, and the S&P is only down 25. So that, that takes me to the next point, and the point is, um, where would I see the VIX index? And I don't think the VIX... I've spoken about this for a while. I don't have any, I, I wish like Dave Whitey had run all the numbers and he had the scientific, I don't have that scientific background here, but I have my mind, which is having followed all this for so long, my memory bank has all these little details stored away. That's why when someone says to me, what's the support? And I say 23.73. They say, how did you get it that? I have no idea because I do the analysis in my head quickly based on what I'm looking at. Very often I'll then go back and check it and it's really close within pennies of what it really is. It's just when you do something over and over again, you get you, the measurement gets a little easier. But in this particular instance, I'm going to make it really quite, quite a vocal point of this, that the volatility, and to my eye, the volatility index has got a completely different uh, infrastructure. The uh, logistics, the uh, algorithms seem to have changed. And I'm not sure what that is, or why it is. I think it has to do with a whole bunch of things to do with so many people now in the options market. I think that's changing it. But within this context, what it is saying is this little mini trend line that I've got here in the daily chart, having gone below it once, it's saying that you can still draw some lines that are very important. But even more important is this 200 period moving average of 22.66. We are way below, we're three points below it. Way below it means nothing when you're getting a market that becomes extremely volatile. And because we've already seen <clears throat> that the uh, S&P, the Qs and the IWM have made their peak Ds and are pulling back, it's only the Dow that's missing. And even now the Dow is one of the stronger indices. Um, I'm just waiting for that, and then I'm going to assess to say on a very short-term basis, is this going to be the time for the market to pull back? Why? So let me just go back to say, if at any point the volatility index does go into the 21s, and on any day it closes above 22.86 or 66, sorry, and the, the Dow is down over 400 points and the S&P is down over, I'd have to say, 90 points, I think you have to take that seriously on the very short term. Okay, got that out of the way. In the meantime, I wanted to say that the um, the dollar strength, and this is what I said to subscribers in my weekend overview, that maybe the dollar rallying like this um, could see the uh, a little bit of market weakness, but still rotational. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Does the strength in the in the dollar impact? It has per periodically. It's not an absolute constant, but it is there. Will that impact the market? Or is this just a bounce in the dollar as gold takes a breather off the spectacular move up? And look, what I, let's go back to silver. Silver's saying, hey, wait a minute. I'm still holding. Don't forget about me. I'm now, I'm the leader. Don't forget about me. I've broken out in the weekly chart. Is it a brand new F or is this, sorry, is it an old F or a brand new A? Well, we don't have to decide that right now, but it is a leg B in the weekly, monthly chart, and that's important. So silver's holding well until silver closes below 24. It's at 24.97 right now. Until it closes below 24, the trend so far is up, and we'll see if there's a change below 24. Now let's go to the uh, other question I got was crude oil. Yeah, crude oil, oh, that big move from the 64 level to the 80s, that's 16 point. That's... That is a lot. Uh, 14 points. Uh, is that right? 14 points in crude oil getting back into the rectangle formation. Well, that's all it's done. It's in the rectangle formation. But now you've got yourself a different trading range. You've got a trading range that says the resistance at 83 in the 83s. 
If that's taken out, that's really on a closing basis on the weekly. That's really important. But if there's a, a dip, 76 is now the key support level that you got to monitor. Question came in about, I spoke about my, let me just go there, essays. So Charles Schwab, I use that to say, I have a technique that I developed a long time ago where I followed stocks that were really weak that all of a sudden had like two big red candles to the downside and then a gap down day where everything looked like the end of the world. And I called and then what happens is the volatility index, uh, sorry, the, the, the volume spikes to levels that it hasn't seen ever, at least not for a year. And uh, that says if there is a close above the, uh, almost immediately, if there is a close above the high of the wick, of the bar that made the low, in this case, 45 round number low on the 13th of March, there could be 28 days of a move above the low that was made. And if it can hold for, for 28 days, and as it starts, say, the 29th or the 30th day, if it starts to move well above the gap high that was made, in this case, that's the gap of... Um, 54.90 on the 13th, it could actually go for another 28 days. So then the question came in, how did you come up with that 28 day figure? And I said to myself, oh, the exact question I didn't want because I did a lot of work on it and I'll talk about it when I get back. That was down 43. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So the answer to that question is a little complex one, only in the sense that I never really, I, I might, might have written it down somewhere, but I can't find where I wrote it down. Um, but the analysis I did was uh, watching the action on, 
I'd say not that many. Historically, if you had to look back and say that is not a statistical count at all, it was more like 10, maybe 12 stocks over a period of a year. Uh, there might have been more. But my assessment was that if that selling climax was what I looked at, as uh, like a like a VIX index or something, the selling intensity was probably so great that unless it took out almost immediately that low, um, there was enough buying to say all those people were going to look back and say, oh, man, why did I get out? In this case, it's not a great chart, Schwab, uh, but it is holding. This, I think, is the 19th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Is that 21? 20 or 21 days. So it's still way above it. 51.60, I shouldn't say way above, but it's at 45 was the low round number low. This is still holding pretty well. Okay, with that said, there are a couple of things that I want to look at here. So the, the TLT question came in, where would you add to a position uh, in the TLT? And I'm just saying to you, I think we're in a rectangle formation. I'm not sure we're going to break out above the 200 period moving average of 108.53 significantly. We might go above, we could come back, but we're kind of in this rectangle with the high of the week of the 9th of December of 109.68. So we're only uh, three points below that. But I am thinking that this is kind of stuck. And I don't think at this particular time that interest rates really are the, that that. I just don't think it's a market issue just at this particular time. It could become, but it isn't right now. Next question came in. Um, could I look at um, FXI? FXI is the uh, large cap uh, China ETF, iShares, uh, trading at 29. I think that 200 period moving average of 29.65 It's made a peak C. It's pulled back. It's taking too much time. I just think it's kind of stuck here. If you are long, I don't think this is quite the place for me, at least. I'm not like looking at this as a long position. Uh, I just don't see that much on the upside. I think there are a lot of things going on that I keep coming will keep coming out about about China just to put some pressure on the upside. So Queb fits in that same thing. Queb, which is K W E B, is the um, uh, crane shares China in into I believe that's the internet. Let me just double check. I have it written down, but I lost that. Uh, China, yeah, in Internet ETF. Yeah, it's the same thing. This has made a peak A, peak B, peak C. It looks just like the FXI and at 29.99 at right now, down 44 cents. I just think it's kind of stuck just for the moment. If it starts to trade in the 32.50 area after this kind of a breather, one, two, three, four, five, six bars already without a new a recovery high, that says it's almost like a brand new buy signal. So I, I'm looking at it a scan saying it's had a really good move. I think it needs more time. Uh, next question was about, I wrote it down here. Oh, Arlo. I showed this uh, on, on my weekend overview to subscribers. This is Arlo Technologies, wireless, smart, home um, security cameras, doing really nicely, gapped up from the low that was made at 3.45. 3.37 on the 7th of March, gaps up and hasn't looked back. So it made a peak A, then a lower peak A, and a lower peak A, and then a lower peak A. When you see three or four A's underneath the previous A after a huge move up like this, that's a very powerful move. And that says there's a really good chance that it should make higher highs. And now it's gone to a leg beat today because it hasn't made a new recovery high. I think it will go to C and D, and it's one that I had as a screamer uh, for subscribers to look at, but we haven't done anything yet. But I do like today's action. I wanted to see how it did today. Um, next question came in. Where did it go? Uh, a DPSD, DPST. That sounds familiar to me. Oh, at 7.31, this is the DX Daily Regional. Oh, bank. This is a bank index. Wow, at 7.31. I would just say, wow, this is not going anywhere. This is in a rectangle formation. Even if it pops above it, it's going to have to do some retesting. So I just need to make sure that I'm, I'm reading this correctly. This is the, oh, this is the DX Daily Regional Banks Bull three times long. Oh, I see what you say. You know, this is interesting. 
because it's a, re a long rectangle at a low, it says that sh there could be one slip to the downside. If that downside slip it very quickly comes back into the range, and then this time, after making a lower low, actually closes on any day above the left side high, the conservative high, I'd say, is 936. But the one that really is the one that counts is on the 16th of March of 998. And you're at 734. That's a long way to go. But I'm looking at this and saying, if that happens, that would say, yes, finally, there's some structure to say that, I don't know if this is to do with Cray, K-R-E-Y. -K uh, yeah, it's the same pattern. And that says, finally, there's some kind of support in the regional banks and that there should make, be a basing in the, the KRE between 40, let's call it 41, or let's call it 40, because if you do step below, that's what's important, and 45, I'm going to make it. So a close, it's at 43.24, up 61 cents today. Um, if it closes at any time, I'm giving it the whole month of April, any daily close above, Right here, of nine point. Oh, that was not the, that was the the KRE. Please use the KRE as your benchmark. Above forty six forty seven, says the forty seven fifty one high of the sixteenth of March should be hit very quickly. And if it closes above it, you now go to this ugly candle right here that spiked up and closed poorly uh, on the fourteenth with a high of forty nine forty two. Just go step by step, and that makes us base. Absolutely imperative because if there is a close below 40, so three points up or three points down makes a big difference. A close below uh, 40 says don't touch this. But at this particular point, um, I'd say as a trade, and I'm not sure I'd be too heavy in the in, in the three times long, but as a trade, yes. Now let's just see what's happening here in the E-mini. Oh, look at that beautiful cup formation. Oh, 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 look at it. So you remember I said the 40... 4101 is going to be key as support. That held there. So now it's at 4111. And, and you started a leg B. Finally, you've got your leg B in the, there it is, in the 10-minute chart. Good. I think this is a not, not bad action at all, considering what, you know, the, the thinking has been. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. But now you say, ah, not bad. So this is E slash B. In the one-minute chart, with all the technical stochastics flat at 92, this is nice action so far. Days young, and I love the fact that we've had three failures, and now the fourth, the fourth one says, "Oh man, if we fail, that's terrible." But no, the fourth time is looking quite strong. So um, para is looking strong. Para, para. Why when I saw para, did I think of a song? I don't know why it was. Wow, talking about music. The uh, Boston Ballet have, uh, went yesterday. The La Mer, that's Debussy's La Mer. They, that performance was absolutely spectacular. If anybody's interested in dance, the program that we saw, uh, this is the one that has La Mer, uh, is phenomenal. I would say it's one of the best performances I've seen from the Boston Ballet. I've seen. That's all I can say. And I've been watching them go from elephants. They used to dance like elephants to want to to world class. Absolutely fantastic. All right, I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. 
a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC. Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, good point from the Danny. Uh, Paramount uh, Global, I think this is Paramount Films, I believe. Up to at uh, up 60 cents at 22.55. Nice action. Trying for leg D2270 is the resistance of the 200 period moving average, but one penny above uh, 2274. Not far to go. And it starts leg D, and that'll help the daily. And the weekly chart says, hey, I'm finally going to be breaking that downtrend resistance. The monthly chart looks horrible. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I'm not, let's see. Okay, so here comes a question. I, I'll deal with this over the week. I don't want to deal with it too much today. I've already spoken about it. But uh, given that we're only in peak B in the S&P monthly, how do you see the cycle playing out? I, I'll, I'll just start off a, a conversation that's going to go every day this week. Uh, and the conversation says that I like to go step by step. There are times where a price goes to a peak B. Then it falls back sharply, and under it you get a peak A, a B, a C, even a D, and that negates that B because you have to go for the D. That D starts to fail. That's a D that you have to take seriously. So finally, I can talk about it in in cogent terms and not say, oh, if this and if that. I'm just saying we are right now a gray peak B underneath the peak B and the all-time high of the monthly chart, no other way I can count it. There are very, very seldom failures in the monthly charts, and this is an IPO. But mostly the, the monthly charts go to Ds, Es, Fs, or whatever. They don't store it at B and then fail and go below the low starting point. The starting point for this to totally fail would be 2190 in the S&P, because 2191.86 is the uh, low of March. And I just don't see that happening in this particular phase. I, I like what I'm seeing. The, the histogram of the monthly chart is improving. Hey, we've just started April. I can't get too carried away. Yet. Other than to say, we are long. Uh, we've only got long positions. We, we're looking at areas that are have been a little bit weak and now showing some strength. Uh, it, it's a remarkable that we still have the DBA, DBA Cultural Fund, and it's now getting back to the rectangle high. It's at 20.68. The 20.80, the 20.85 level was the week of the 23rd of September. That was the high, and uh, it's almost there. And the low was a double bottom at 19.22 on July uh, 22, and then 19.25, uh, the first part of 19 uh, of 2023. So a three cents higher. So this is all very important. And you can see the weekly chart actually is improving, even though it looks like it's a rectangle formation. So with that said, Dow's up eight, 
uh, s and P's in minus 19. I see enough residual strength on this very short term to allow for the Dow to go to its leg D. And then I think I have to do an assessment. My overall impression over the, the little bit that I was able to do this weekend, because I had guests and all sorts of things going on, was um, to say that on a purely technical basis, I see no reason to think that the October low that we that that was such a significant low will be tested. But I do see. I'll just do this quickly because I haven't done this for a little while. Um, is that the one? Or is this the one? Yeah, this is the one. So this chart shows you the Chapman wave, dark news, cloud cover, and uh, all I can say is that within that context, whoops, let's move it over to the side like this. Within this context, look how nicely you're holding here. You're in this whole band that has been for all of 2020, late 2021, all the way through to now, has said we've got a lot of bad news on the dark news cloud cover. But the market, since the internal and residual low, that was from the March, most recent March lows, um, has acted extremely well. That's all I can say. And it doesn't say where it's going to go to the upside, but except that rectangle, long rectangle, narrow rectangle midpoint that I had drawn in a little while ago. Look at the way the price has hit the exact midpoint and stall right here. And that's how important some of these trend lines are. We'll see what happens. So with that said, uh, another question came in. Where was it? Oh, could I look at the, there we go. Could I look at the XLE? And I'll do that right now. I'm about to make a mistake. It'll be a terrible thing. There it is. There we go. Okay. Oh, I just made another mistake. Mister, what's the matter with you? Wake up. All right. I've got it. There it is. Put it over there. Click that one, and then it just disappears down to there. All right. So within that context, uh, a quick look at... Right, XLE, XLE. And this is what I was looking at the other day and saying, well, considering what we've been through, the move to the upside and then the pretty sharp move to the downside and the recovery, the XLE, which is about to come up, there it is. This is the S&P Select Energy Spider Fund. There it is. Has popped to a leg B, holding very nicely now. When you're only at a B and you've gapped up, a couple of times, and yet you're still holding well, I don't ignore that as internal strength, residual strength, actually. But here's the, here's the thing that I'm looking at. I believe that the XLE, the S&P Spider Energy Fund, is in a trading band, and that it's select issues that are going to do very well. And we've gone underneath the long rectangle, and now we've gone back into the rectangle. How it handles it on the right side is going to be so important because the MACD in the weekly chart is still very weak, stochastic still weak, and yet look at the data. The data is flat at 87% in the stochastic. That's giving strength. So my thinking is the question was where would it go? And I think at 86.01, I think the 88 to 80, 89 area is very strong resistance at this particular time. That was a question to that. Another question is <clears throat> your GDX. So the GDX has made a peak D. It did the one to, in a shorter period of time, made the one to one to the upside from the 33, 34 high of the 27th of January. Nice move up into the 34s is trading at 33, 87, holding very well. Is this going to be an F? in a cup formation failure pattern so far, the technicals are good in the weekly chart, or is this a brand new B? So here's your A, peak A right there, and here's your F slash B, because this is the starting point. Any new high going below, the, after going below that, no, any, after going below, 20, going to 21.52, any pullback that holds above that and goes higher, needs to have an alternate count. That's just the way we do it to be conservative. F slash B, but the technicals are saying this is probably uh, still a B in the GDX. It could pull back quite sharply to the 30 level. It's at 33.87, and then have another move up. So I'm looking at it in the weekly chart as 
closing last week above the left side high in the cup formation, and that's really important. So, so far, this internal strength, would I think of a shorting gold? Not at the moment. Absolutely not at the moment. I am EURUSD. That's the euro dollar currency pair. Had a big spike to lay. The reason why I'm doing this is to see whether the dollar can keep rallying. Well, Here's your right shoulder failure in the cup formation in the weekly chart for the euro. That means the USD JPY should be doing very nicely. And it is. It's right at the 200 period moving average in Lake C. How it holds is going to be important If the uh, at 133.83. If the Japanese yen actually spikes into the 135s, that's going to help the dollar. I'll be back in the moment. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I've worked in this last section before I get uh, to hand you over to Steve Rose and all the great programming here at TFNN. Check out the open call, daily newsletter. This is what I'm looking at here. Within the context, I'm going to let me get out of this here because I, I'll make it as clear as possible. 41... 41.19 to 41.22 is needed after 1.30 or maybe 2 o'clock this afternoon to say, wow, now we can move higher. Maybe in the next day or two we can see the Dow uh, making that leg D. It doesn't have to do it, but everything here says that it should. And then we'll have to assess and see, all right, do we now have uh, um, some kind of a consolidation? Uh, most important, I'm looking at here, and it says in the den that the rules, uh, Federal Reserve expects... Uh, to make 
Oh, it has already. Well, where did that go? Uh, there it is. Uh, Fed officials won't be able to trade stocks and bonds as well. As, most of these guys are extremely wealthy. That's the irony of the whole thing. But that's what it says. I wonder if they'll ever do that to the politicians. No way on earth will they do that. I'd love to see an assessment of who made what over the last 10 or 15 years uh, in both the Senate and the Congress. I don't care which side. I just like to know who made what and what they had and what was being legislated at the time when they were making these trades. Wouldn't that be interesting? Anyway, enough of that. What I want you to say is that the action that I'm looking at right now on a very short-term basis is saying this is a difficult market uh, in the sense that if you're in the right area, you're just sitting there saying, hey, great. And if you're in the wrong area, you say, what is going on? And therefore, be very selective. I still say a, it's a great opportunity to have cash ready for anything that happens. There's always something that just goes kaboom. And just if that's the stock that you're looking at, look at Apple. Apple is down almost $4 after that GCSC. And it's a doji candle and an be Apple can consolidate for a little bit. It's been fantastic so far. Have your money ready. Don't, don't be afraid to say, this is the number I'm looking at. I can step in over here. Um, you put it to stop. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Check out my opening call. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes.